And um, I've been reading your book, The Arts of Seduction, over the last week. It's very interesting. I love reading, as you can see. I don't have a TV here, it's just books. <laughs> and um, I, I found it really interesting. What I really loved about the opening of the book, it talks about sex being an experience, the, the difference between a fuck and, ex and an experience. I really feel like that, because I think um, in modern times with this porn or Tinder culture, it's kind of like the McDonald's of sex. It's like fast food. It's taking away the real joy or the beauty of intimacy, which is the most beautiful part of having sex in, in general, isn't it? When, it? when it's just more than the physical, it's just like a whole experience. You don't need to go out because you have so much fun with your partner. You know, it's, it's really, really beautiful. And some of the things that um, surprised me and interested me in this book, um, you start off with the art of perfuming. I found that really interesting because um, I haven't worn deodorant for five years now. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. But I think we live in a culture where I, li I like the way you talked about natural pheromones as well. How, you know, how perfumes and oils can blend with your own smell. Because I think a lot of perfumes these days and deodorants, there's kind of an obsession with masking our natural smell. And in any supermarket, we can find products like intimate wash for the vulva but there's no penis cleaner <laughs> so <laughs> why is that so I think how can we get a balance between celebration of pheromones and and perfume perfume so I actually wrote the book literally um to translate the metaphors because as I said that you know people read the comments so they don't really know what is the the nuances that it's talking about and there are a lot of nuances and I think that Particularly, so it says um, that a, a sexual relationship or an intimate relationship where you do have sex together, that it will be longer lasting and more pleasurable if the woman does feel the same amount of pleasure. Because a lot of times it is the woman that gets so bored with the monotony, becomes more like a chore, you bring it to an end, you're like, okay, I've had it. And, you know, it, everything kind of goes belly up because both partners don't feel the same excitement and i'm always trying to say to men that if um you can find it in yourself to take the time to pleasure her really really fully if she can come to that kind of pleasure your own pleasure will go up tenfold because it's just how it works it's just the way that it works but when it comes to perfume i'm always fascinated by so yes it is so much easier i guess um you know you go to a supermarket you pick up xyz perfume you spray it on the old style of perfuming the natural perfumes it just took that much longer but i just think it was so sexy because like you said it gave you the chance to create your own individual smell so it wasn't about masking your smell it was about enhancing it because we all have our own perspiration we all have our own smell and each perfume was left on there for long enough to mix with your own smells so you started perfuming, perfuming yourself in the morning and by the evening it had actually mingled with your smells and you um, then had your own very distinct individual flavor and I think that's something very exciting literally about doing that because it's just I mean if one just rubbing perfume on yourself or rubbing perfume oil on yourself makes you feel amazing it's just that contact with the skin but it wasn't again like I said it wasn't just for the women it was equally for the men so back then there is this whole schedule of how long men were supposed to spend on their um, toiletries Mm -hmm. on their toilet, on their abu uh, ab ablutions, I get the word wrong, um, on their ablutions. So, you know, they were supposed to be massaged with different perfumed oils. They were supposed to also make sure, um, for instance, that, you know, India is a hot country, the weather is very different. And when you go out in the sun, you're likely to perspire. So when you lean forward to talk to somebody that you know how did you do that so men actually wore garlands of different kinds of scented flowers around the neck and so on so and yes it also tells them how often they're supposed to um, get rid of their pubic hair how often they're supposed to clean certain things so yeah in in, in ancient times we had the cleaners for we had the penis cleaners 
<laughs> it's interesting how there's all this pressure on women for those products, but there's nothing for men. It's it's like a very really unfair. Because I think it I think that really has a negative impact on female sexuality today. For example, there's many men who really enjoy um, cunnilingus, but women who are like too you know uptight to actually just let go, you know, and, and enjoy it. That are thinking about yeah. what it looks like or what it smells like, what it tastes like. Whereas there are many enthusiastic kind of linguists out there. And I do believe that that is part of the problem with all, all these kind of this obsession with intimate cleaner and, and how available it is, you know, it's, it's, it's just awful. I mean, but also it's, you know, so I recently did a reel and about saying to women that the smell of their vagina, the, the smell of a natural, healthy vagina, the natural smell of a healthy vagina is the most exciting thing in the world. Absolutely. And then I said about how, Perfume makers have been trying to put that smell into perfumes as a base. And, you know, and it was just a case of just to say, let's normalize it, ladies, you're okay. There was nothing more intended. You should see the kind of trolling I have had from men saying, how dare you say this? You are so disgusting. What do you mean? It's a natural. And oh my God, it's just been unbelievable. <laughs> and then a bunch of men saying, what about my penis? Hey, you know, go find somebody to talk about a penis. Yes, there are scents based around the penis. Go find them. I'm not particularly interested in telling you about them. Well, I actually saw an, an advert a few years ago that was trying to make a perfume out of that smell. And the advertisement was really funny. It was like these guys in the gym sniffing the saddles that the women had just used. It was, it was really funny. That, that came from that lady. God, I can't remember her name. But, you know, um, I can't remember the name of the perfume. Is it called... Um, I can't remember, sorry. But, um, you know, where she would literally take the panties off the models when they came off the catwalk and smell them. Uh -huh. I think um, it was devised the smell for, well, for many different women. I wrote about it in an article years ago called Scent of a Woman in, in for, for El Pais newspaper, maybe about eight years ago or something. Okay. Yeah, and it was it was really interesting. It's actually found, you know, they, they took lots of examples and then made an actual perfume that was supposed to be... And of course, now you have uh, Erica Badu with her um, vagina incense, and um, you've got Gwyneth Paltrow's um, candle. This smells <laughs> like my vagina, and so, and you know what? I it's like I put all these things in the in the caption of the reel, and I still had people saying, "That's such nonsense. Who says? Which are these perfumes? Damn it, read." <laughs> I know. But there are, plenty, there are lots of fans of that anyway. Because I mean, one, one thing that really turns me on is when a guy is like really into that smell and like is it's like going and shamelessly like going, <laughs> yeah. like we are animals, you know? So it's just like, wow, I find it very, very interesting. It is a very exciting smell. <laughs>